So this video today is a pretty short one, at least by the kind of videos that I've been making so far. Um, it's actually a part of like a full sketchbook spread, but I actually just spent so much time on like this individual painting that I decided to make it its own video because um, I don't know, even though the painting is small, it was like my first ever like fully gouache painting and uh, I was having a lot of fun with it, still being inspired by uh, the video game Dredge. And so I just took some inspiration from the landscapes and beautiful scenery of the game and the art style, and I wanted to see what I could do with it. <laughs> While I'm taping down the painting in the video because I started the painting process and realized that I hadn't taped it down, I might as well say that I am Rorifluent. Feel free to call me Rory if you're new around here. Hi, hello, how are you? I am very excited to talk to you guys about this video. Uh, feel free to stick around. I like to create dope art content and hopefully a chill atmosphere. And if you're not new around here, what is up my dudes? I am very excited to talk about, as usual, this painting and this painting process, especially because it's super different than what I would normally draw. I wouldn't say by any means that landscapes are my specialties, so this was a learning curve for sure. I feel like there are parts of the video where I'm like, oh, why did I make that change? But honestly, in the end, I'm pretty excited about this piece and very happy with the way that it turned out. And I can't necessarily say that for everything. I have a video um, that I have all of the footage for and just need to like slap together of this larger painting that I was trying to do. And I like liked it when I finished it and it's been sitting on my desk and I keep looking at it and being like, I don't think I like you anymore. <laughs> Which is always a little disappointing when something like that happens, but you know, it was good practice. I'm figuring things out. I just think that like the smaller painting I did before it under the same theme turned out way better and I'm not, totally sure what happened with it. I think it's because I used a granulating watercolor paint and I'm not necessarily used to working with granulation. I don't necessarily like the way it looks, um, at least with the art style that I have. I'm still kind of trying to figure it out. And I thought that it would work really well for like water, but I don't know. <laughs> Every time I glance over at the piece, I'm like, oh, I'm not so sure about this one anymore. Anyways, talking about obviously the painting that I'm doing uh, in this video, I wanted to go about the entire thing with gouache. This is um, actually part of a larger spread that I did, all kind of themed and inspired by the video game Dredge. Uh, I was watching my partner play the game and I was just really, really inspired every time he turned the game on. So I decided that I wanted to do more than just take some stylistic inspiration. And I wanted to go ahead and try and paint um, a little bit of a scene from the game. It's not like an exact uh, replica. I'm not copying the game in any way. I just wanted to use kind of like the general composition as a uh, stepping stone for, oh my god, <laughs> frog in my throat, um, as a stepping stone for this piece and, and just trying out how to start a landscape painting, honestly. 
The colors are as close as I could get color mixing the gouache to the colors that I was using on the page, which were, um, let's see, Daniel Smith's Lunar Violet, uh, probably Windsor and Newton Cotman's Raw Sienna because I always use that as my orange. <laughs> and I think that those were the two colors that I was using for this spread. So you can see here that I'm pulling from, this is Windsor and Newton, Windsor and Newton's Oh my God, that doesn't sound right to me at the moment, but I know it's correct. Windsor & Newton's designer gouache <laughs> um, in the color raw sienna, duh. And um, the purple is a color mix of, I think like a quinacridone purple or quinacridone violet um, from Holbein and um, Windsor & Newton's uh, indigo. Yeah, and then Holbein's Payne's Gray. <laughs> it took a little bit of fiddling to get the, the purple to be the cool toned purple that I want it to be like Daniel Smith's Lunar Violet, but I was actually happy that I was able to get there because like color mixing is something that I'm also working on practicing and just keeping as a part of my painting process because it's pretty easy to just always go back to the colors that you know. You'll see me throughout this video, um, thankfully because I'm using gouache, I can kind of um, play this game of tug of war with the values, adding more tints to the piece, adding more shades to the piece, and, and trying to see if I can map out those flat values first and then go in for like a little bit of detail. I was definitely going for a very um, simple take on this landscape because, you know, it's not something that I'm super familiar with. So I wanted to kind of go about it to the best of my ability, but not push myself too hard to make it super realistic and perfect. Um, not that those two are mutually exclusive, but I wasn't trying really for either one. <laughs> um, and I was just really hoping that when someone like stepped back and looked at the piece, it looked like rocks sitting on water like cliffs in water and a sky that's that that was my goal though <laughs> if you can get those three things from the painting i consider that a success <laughs> Always when I'm using gouache, I tend to start out using it like watercolor. So laying down really faint, very pale um, washes just to lay out my colors, kind of get an idea of what I'm dealing with and to like make the white of the page a little bit less daunting. And then because I know I'm probably going to be going in with white gouache for my highlights. Um, not that I can't leave the paper as part of the highlight, but with gouache and especially as how like unsure I am of the medium at the moment, I just feel more comfortable tackling it um, with the darks first and then building to the lighter parts of the painting. But yeah, I like to start with a wash and then kind of just start adding more detail, adding texture. You'll definitely see me trying to add a lot of texture here and really trying to emphasize the jaggedness of the rocks, you know, because there's like these cliffs and the, the like, uh, I guess you would say the frame of reference is very close to the bottom of part of this cliff. And then as it gets farther out into the painting or into the scene of the painting, um, those cliffs kind of get smaller and smaller and go more and more towards that um, middle point of the page towards the horizon line and uh, as that happens I'm hoping that I am able to get across that the um, cliffs closest to the page are, are kind of like right in front of our faces and then they're kind of so vast that they expand far into the horizon and that's kind of the point of view that I'm using for this painting.
You can see that I'm also kind of going back and forth on each side of the painting, just trying to make both sides look stylistically the same. Um, and I'm trying to kind of figure out where I want my lights, figure out my dark still, even though I'm kind of into the detail process. Uh, I'm still kind of battling how I want uh, the light to play on the piece. And I wouldn't say that I necessarily focused on lighting a whole lot, uh, which I could have, but I didn't. I was really just trying to get the impression of these cliffs and the impression of the water and the sky between them. And I'm hopeful that that was what I was able to achieve. And this is the part of the video where I really start being like, you know what, I kind of need to just say fuck it and I need to start putting uh, deeper shadows on these uh, cliff faces that are closest to us. Uh, and I choose to make the ones in the distant a little bit lighter, um, or distance rather. And uh, you'll see, I'll, I'll start working on the sky again and the uh, ocean, you know, it's not, <laughs> those aren't done. I just kind of got really enveloped in trying to make sure that the cliffs were good and at a spot that I was comfortable with before I moved on to um, the sky and the ocean. It's kind of at this point where I feel like, okay, you know, maybe we're getting somewhere. I'm starting to get harsher edges and a more distinct planes on the cliffs. And I'm really enjoying that, really liking that. That is exciting me. <laughs> and going in with the deeper, I believe like um, burnt umber color and with mixed with like a little bit of sepia just to give it a little bit of a cooler tone. Um, Cause burnt umber is so warm. I just wanted it to fit a little bit better with that cool purple color. Um, so I'm definitely at this point very excited because it feels like I am finally able to get some crisp edges and get some distinguishing um, characteristics to the cliff faces, uh, which was really exciting at the time. Again, I'm kind of choosing to go back in with deeper colors in the cliff sides that are very far away from our point of view. And I'm just trying to make sure that those are distinguished from the background and I'm adding as much detail as I'm comfortable and as I want. And I'm just kind of like continuing to do the same like push and pull per usual, you know, <laughs> that I do with gouache where I'm kind of like figuring out my darks and lights and I'm, I'm not the best at it yet. So it definitely takes me a while. Um, this uh, video, while it's shorter, the painting process was still like for this tiny piece. It's probably like, I don't know, an eight by three painting. <laughs> um, it, it took me like an hour and a half to do fully and that's with like stints of letting it dry because I don't personally have like a, um, a little heat tool to help the paint dry. So um, yeah, I mean, while the video's short, you know, the painting still took a while because I was figuring out how to do what I wanted to do. <laughs> I start going about the piece with a smaller brush. If you've noticed, I've been using this large flat um, square brush, just about the entire painting to make sure that I really get those jagged edges. Um, and it's really nice because I can lay down flat colors and then I can also um, like do thick washes with it. So that brush has been really handy, especially as I uh, have transitioned into a new style that's a little bit more rugged in my painting process. And I like to show more layering and I don't know, like harsher edges um, in my individual paint strokes. And so um, you also see that I'm going in with a colored pencil to start kind of helping blur some of the uh, colors together. And you know, it's just a familiar part of my process and I'm just kind of trying to see how it would work with gouache, if it's really helping. I definitely found that it was really helpful to get a sharp tip with the colored pencil and go into the most distant cliff faces and start really defining those edges. And then I kind of worked that up to the uh, cliffs that are closest to our point of view in the frame of reference. And so uh, as I did that, I was like, okay, oh my God, this might be working. <laughs> I might actually have something here because I was really enjoying the uh, depth that the colored pencil was giving the uh, individual lines of each cliff face. And it was finally seeming like there was going to be some um, distinguishing factors, I guess, distinguishing lines between um, each cliff face so that you could kind of tell that they were going into the distance. And that was really happy, especially this um, looking back at it right now, the right side I'm like very happy with and the left side we're kind of getting there. You can see I'm fiddling with it a little bit more uh, because I was really trying to make sure that I had the cliffs the way that I wanted them to on that side before I defined any more lines. 
And remember, we're going for the impression of cliff faces. It is not perfect, <laughs> but we are just trying to learn a little bit more about gouache and learn a little bit more about landscapes and how to paint them. And that is it. So it's about this point in the video where I make the mistake of trying to put like a little floating eyeball in the middle of the cliffs because I was like, it might be cool. <laughs> and uh, I even go as far as to kind of have these rays like extending from it. And it's even difficult to kind of tell from the footage, but it was gonna be an eyeball eventually. Um, but I just, I didn't like it. So, um, at the end of this footage, you're gonna see that it cuts to just the painting going back to the way it was because I really, really didn't like the eyeball and I was like, why did I touch it? It was done. It was good. I could have moved on, done the sky, done the ocean and been done with this thing. Like, why did I do this to myself? <laughs> Um, so you will see that it will it will go back to normal and the painting will go back to the way that it was at the end of this little segment that's uh, got like two more minutes left on it. <laughs> And we're back with no eyeball on the painting and a fully rendered tiny painting landscape. <laughs> and uh, that was, yeah, that was definitely like a headache and a half to figure out. And you can see I'm kind of making sure that my edges are still as defined as I liked them the first time. And I'm just adding in some smaller details with my colored pencil. And honestly, we're done. I, I peel the tape. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm done. You know, if I really want to add something else to it later, I can. And I take a breather. And all in all, I end up being really happy with the tiny painting. It was a really nice exercise and really, really fun. It's not often, you know, that I get to do small exercises like this. So it was genuinely really enjoyable to have this painting be a part of a sketchbook spread that I already really loved. And I was able to do a small landscape that I'm actually really proud of and really, really happy with. And I want to continue to do more of that and continue to push myself to do larger landscapes. Um, I actually kind of did in a way with this larger painting that I was mentioning I wasn't super happy with. I'm still glad that I did it. I'm still gonna, you know, piece together the footage and make a video out of it because, you know, 
home not every painting that you paint you're going to like but that's okay because it is part of the process and I understand that and I'm hoping that next time when I go about um a project that's kind of as big as that painting was and I don't know just I can apply what I learned to it to from it to more projects um and hopefully they will turn out better because I really love having kind of goals and paintings and projects that I want to work on and I have quite a few so I want to take what I learned not only from this spread but also from this future video spread that you will see um or painting rather and hopefully I can make something pretty cool eventually. <laughs> so if you stuck around to the end of the video, thank you very much. I will talk to you in the next one. Feel free to do all the youtube -y things like comment, subscribe. And yeah, I will talk to you in the next video. Bye!